When someone's really anointed, they can say the exact same thing as someone who's not anointed, and the outcome is totally different. Think about anointing like a river. You don't own it. You can touch it, but you can't control it. Purity is what drives power. The moment you feel a check about something, you can no longer do it. A person is most anointed when there is less of their identity and more of God's identity. The things that we feel like we own, we do not say thank you for. If you ever leave any assignment without feeling a little bit relieved that God's anointing showed up, you've become possessive and prideful. And there will come a day when you step into that river and that river is not your friend anymore. Everyone wants to get to the high places, but if you want to go high, you first have to go deep. What's up, crew? Welcome back to the deep end. We got something cool for you today. What's up? What's up? How are you? I'm doing great. Tell me everything about your life right now. 30 seconds. Let's go. My life is great. Me and my wife are doing great. We're having a lot of fun. Food is great. Macros are awesome. Church is great. Wait, wait. You're on macros again? Macros. Oh, yes. Are you working out? Not working out yet, but I am on uh, some strict macros. It's amazing. I'm learning how to eat healthy that it makes me so happy. It tastes so good. Wow. I'm in a very happy place. Are you on macros? I am, but loosely so loosely you were like working with a trainer a while ago weren't you well i've been working with the trainer all year but travel has been so crazy that like if i don't have food in my macros to eat what i'm doing is i'm not eating oh. so i'm getting in trouble by my trainer because fasting he's like no no, no it's not no i wish it was that you spiritual. could fast you could do that but i'll i'll eat like 1200 calories he's like what are you doing you gain weight when you don't eat <laughs> i'm like well what I was in an airplane for five hours and then I couldn't find food. Oh, so yes. I'm working on it. But a couple nights in the last couple, like week or two, I've been like, it's 1130. I didn't eat much today. So I got to go find a steak or something. And like, you're not supposed to eat that late, but I'm having to do what I have to do. You know the mistake I made last night? <clears throat> I had a scoop and a half of protein and completely missed it. Because the day before I traumatized myself by having three scoops of protein of like whey protein in 10 minutes have you ever done that no i usually try to get my protein from like food yeah yeah, yeah. we were we were doing that um yeah. the problem is that chicken you can only go so far no you can go further than you think with the chicken <laughs> tell us your solution promise promise that you can just eat chicken and eat and eat and eat until you feel so sick wow but that's like dean when he's in bodybuilding mode yeah Bro, he just eats chicken every 30 minutes. You probably got like an And he hates Christian. chicken. Yep. No. Uh-huh. He's traumatized by the chicken. Hmm. They got him Publix good. loves you. Yeah, dude. So uh, we're back. We had to skip last week. Um, it was such a good episode that I muted the mic halfway through on accident. It was so sad. We realized <laughs> 30 minutes afterwards. And didn't the video corrupt? Like you had to rebuild the whole thing? No, the project corrupted four times. It was great. Some episodes, yep. bro, are like... I was wondering super yeah it was it was really dumb but we've had that happen before yeah and then they always get better yeah it's funny the the episodes we end up putting out they always <laughs> technically they go funny you okay dude COVID? I just have a did you get, I think the, give me a mask I right think now. the Starbucks lady <laughs> got me man I think the siren has finally come out and <laughs> even finally got you uh all right so uh, we're talking today about a specific a question that you asked me yeah last week do you mm-hmm. want to share that story real fast and then we can go into it um great great question yeah i was on i was having a meeting with a friend of mine who's running like who's building like a huge huge soon to be huge company um and they were asking different questions about content and things like that and i am pretty i've been pretty in the weeds for a long time with you like just doing this so i'm pretty like insulated and isolated um but the questions i was able to answer with such certainty and power it was the first time in my life i had seen myself speak with power and authority but in a way that was submitted to the holy spirit Mm. which meant that i was still correctable um still able to be humble but what i was saying i knew it wasn't from me and there so there was power in the words um that authority carried so much weight that i could tell it was just like blowing their minds and these are really 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 smart people like super smart people um so i got out of that meeting and i texted you and i was like hey i'm in some sort of state right now where i feel really strong really powerful how do i either stay here or how did i get here so that i can replicate it because you taught us that back in the day whenever we'd have like a, a really big win or something record a video of yourself remind yourself what you were thinking what you did that day how you felt um that didn't always work for me but it was it was a principle that i remembered well enough to go hey 
how do I get back into this powerful state? What caused it and how do I get there again? Yeah, great. Um, I used to teach it biologically because that was all I really knew. True. So the recording a video for yourself, writing a note Mm -hmm. to yourself, those things like that really builds up the myelin in your brain around that specific context. Myelin is the, what is it again? What is it? It's like the coding on a neural pathway that helps the brain remember how to do something. So it's when we get really good at playing an instrument, Mm -hmm. there's a, it's physical. There's physical imprints in the brain. This sounds weird, but like everything comes down to like chemicals and brain makeup and brain chemistry. Like it's, you can't do something repeatedly if you don't have the circuits in the brain to fire the neurons around that control behavior in the body. So like when you get really good at playing guitar, Mm -hmm. you've got a ton of myelin covering the circuitry in the brain that remembers how to play different things. Mm. Um, it's almost like a circuit board a little bit. Like you're almost using the, uh, solder to keep the one thing in place a little bit. Like when we teach public speaking. So in December, we're teaching this event in New York city and, uh, we got a whole bunch of clients coming out to learn how to speak. And what we do is we literally like throw them on stage and make them present under fire, under pressure of round of, I think we talked about this on the deprogramming depression. Mm hmm. Like they got their friends there. They got people that they, they've never met there and they're having to present and it's, it's nerve wracking. It's cause yeah. the brain, what the brain's going is like, I have no circuitry and there was no pathways for me to like find and fire. And then when they do that, the more, um, the more, a lot, a lot of times trauma, even trauma patients, like people with extreme trauma, they got a lot of myelin around that because the brain keeps being drawn back to that same pattern. They're expecting it over and over again. Mm. So myelin is not always a good thing. It's uh, it's kind of what protects certain skills, states, or processes so that we can repeat them. It's like a circuit board. And then you're mm-hmm. using the solder, putting it in place. And then by the time you've done it for so much, it cements. So to get it undone takes a bit of work. It's like a circuit board. And myelin would be like a flashing light to like draw the energy to that piece oh, okay. on the board got it because the brain is like a hundred million circuit boards at once right with music i think i was telling you this like i had not sang for 14 years 12 14 years and so remember a year ago i was like i want to get my voice back mm-hmm. i feel like i'm supposed to sing mm-hmm. and it's dude it's just like it's been the most horrendous experience because <laughs> my brain can't find the places that i had all of that muscle memory built up mm-hmm and so I was like, man, I'll sit at the piano out here and it's like, it's awful. Like, no one wants to listen to that. I don't want to listen to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and there have been three or four times when I'm just like, my voice is not coming back. Because mm-hmm. it's been replaced. My singing voice has been replaced with this, with, with more of a speaking. Like, it's different muscles. In yeah. Here. And one day, maybe two months ago, have I told you this story? No. One day, two months ago. When I found it. <laughs> uh no wait was it a high note that wasn't there like a it was it was a pronunciation around a word so like when i sing when i say the word you i just say you but when mm-hmm. i when i sing the word you because of the way my voice is put together i have to say hue i have to put an h on the front of it really yeah because i can't control the note without the hue. i don't know why huh. this is just the way i've always sang wow. and um randomly sitting at the piano and um uh, i went hue and in my brain, like I literally, um, like I not, then remembered how to sing. So I'm like, my brain found that thing, like that pathway embedded mm-hmm. under a whole bunch of other pieces of code. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, there it is. We've been trying to find that for a year. Oh, wow. And then now the way you sing words is wildly different than how you say words. Yeah. It's never, if you sing a word the same way you say a word, then your you get nasally and your pitch gets off and it kind of like you have to sing it different because you have to sing it based on your muscles and your vocal cords interesting and i, I never, just forgot how to do all of that huh i haven't noticed that with my voice specifically <clears throat> that's interesting you will now uh-huh or send me some stuff and i'll be like this is you can't hold your pitch here because of the vowel you're mm-hmm. using the like or the, e versus a. A. yeah yeah like that's why when they warm up, they warm up with soft vowels and hard vowels. Mm-hmm. You know that makes sense. Um, 
But yeah, I used to teach this on the biology side. How mm-hmm. do you lock into something? How do you keep something? And so the title for actually today, what I what I when I when you told me this, I was I got on a plane, and on the way to the airport, I was like, I need to, or on the way to the Miami, I was like, I need to figure this out for Jake because I know how to do it, but I don't know how to teach it. Mm. <clears throat> and so today, I want to teach about anointing. Sweet. Because what you're talking about is like, hey, I was in a position where I was like flowing in the anointing. Yeah. And authority is coming from that anointing. Right. Because you're saying words differently. You're saying sentences differently. There's a measure of power behind you. And what you're really trying to figure out is how do I get back to that place? Because I don't know why I got there. Yep. Right. Yeah. It's been the same thing with music too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is something I have a lot of experience with. Growing up leading worship, man, it's all about the anointing. Mm-hmm. Like, if give me a give me a less talented person with more anointed, more anointing, and they will they will be more effective. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, that happens all the time. Um, so, you ready to dive in? Uh huh. Please. We got to rush through this one. Wait, wait, look, before we dive into that, for people that don't know what like anointing is, what is what is it that you're like saying underneath that? What is that definition for you? I think when someone is really anointed, you can um, you will notice how you feel around them more than you're noticing what they're saying. Mm. When someone's really really anointed, they can say the exact same thing. They can sing the exact same thing mm. the same way is someone who's not anointed and the outcome is totally different. Mm. That's an interesting way of putting it. How would you, what would that, what would that's, that makes sense. Hmm. I know that I, yeah, I feel like I'm just trying to break it down at a, like for people that have never heard that before, that definition might, might do it. Power. Power. Yes. That's a good definition for it. It's power. Yeah. It's power specifically attached to a person's gift. That's what anointing is. Power is not, it's not power in a, in a political setting or a business setting. Like Mm -hmm. I have power because I am in charge of team. Mm -hmm. So like when I'm in with my team, I have power because there's consequences if like I could fire someone. Yep. There's power in government because you have positional authority. There's power in social settings because you have the buy-in of the crowd. Mm -hmm. But anointing is power that's specifically attached to your gift. And people really don't know how to explain what happened. Mm-hmm. When you listen to a song, like a worship song from a live worship night. That always does it. And then you begin to like feel really emotional and then you begin to cry and you can't understand it. Mm-hmm. That's anointing at work. Wow. It's anointing. It's not the chords. Like the chords provide a frequency, which is effective. But mm-hmm. what really gets people mobile and moved is the power that's attached to the gift Mm. you know so people who are anointed to speak they can say the exact same thing and all of a sudden like your life is irrevocably changed Mm. that's always anointing yeah so it's not a replacement for skill it's an amplifier of skill and where does a multiplier yeah and where does anointing come from holy spirit yeah Holy Spirit, which we're going to talk about because like anointing in the Old Testament worked way different than anointing in the New Testament. Yeah. So we'll talk about that. So first and foremost, I think people have to be, they, you have to get comfortable operating in your anointing. So think about, think about this, uh, this idea. Have you ever played a worship, a worship night where you didn't know what you were doing and you got up and it was amazing, but you didn't totally remember it? Oh, a hundred times. So yeah. Usually there's anointing is powering that. Mm-hmm. 100%. So anointing is a, and, and if you're not like, if you're watching this and you're um, and you're not really sure what the point of having anointing is, like if you don't like, let's say you're not a singer, or you're not a musician, or you're not in a business, you know, you can be a hairstylist and you can be anointed, mm-hmm. and then people will get into your chair as you're cutting their hair, and they'll be gonna open up with you, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then you have favor. It's favor and anointing tend to link together. Wow. Okay, so anointing is think about anointing like a river. You don't own it. Mm -hmm. You can touch it, but you can't control it. And your job is to prepare yourself to step into that river so that the river doesn't kill you. Mm. So in the old days, pre-Jesus, the priests would wear a a, a, a rope around their, their leg. 
Because if they went into the innermost place and they weren't prepared for it, that they just die. Mm -hmm. So anointing can you can drown in it if you don't know how to get in and out of it. Interesting. Good because it's that. so powerful. Anointing is so powerful that we will sometimes we'll be in this position where and it doesn't kill us because we are um it doesn't kill us like the old days because god's like you're not prepared to kill you that's not how it works anymore it will kill us because if we ever feel like it is ours if we get entitled to it yeah then the pride that comes from that and the pride that comes from power will completely cut you off from anointing well wow. actually i had a um i had a dream about this and I don't have dreams usually. I think we've talked about this. I've been like asking for them. <laughs> so you got to be careful with what you ask God for because he'll give it to you. Mm. And then you have to like, so this is the most terrifying dream I've ever had. Mm. And great way to start. Huh? Great way to start your dream life. Great way to start, man. Great way to start. But I was, um, I was, I was in this scene. I'll share the dream with you real fast and then we'll, we'll unpack anointing because I want to teach practically like how do you get into it? How do you treat it? What will block anointing? All of those things. Mm -hmm. um, there were three people in a car and it was like a husband, a wife, and I think a kid. I wasn't any of these people, but I was observing them through the lens of the woman. Mm. So they're not paying attention to the road. They're not paying attention. They get into a car wreck and they fly out of the car. It's a crazy car wreck. And the woman wakes up and she's like, oh, we're going to be okay. Everything's good but I'm hurt. So I need somebody to find me. And so there are people walking by and her daughter runs by and this woman's shouting at them. And she's like, Hey, I'm over here. I'm over here. I'm over here. And they're not looking at her. They're just running by her. Mm -hmm. And so she gets confused and she's like, why are I'm speaking, but why are they not responding to me? Mm -hmm. They're just running by me. Yeah. And then my, my viewpoint changes and I go from looking through the eyes of the woman to looking outside and looking at the woman and she's in a coma. Oh no. She thinks she's speaking but she's not speaking. Mm. She thinks she's responding, but she's not responding. And so the, the car represented ministry mm. and the body represented the individual platform and the voice represented influence. And so here's what happened. Cause I sent this to a friend and I sent it to my wife. And like, they're like, they interpret dreams and stuff. Cause I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just like, Hey, I had this dream and I was really scared. So, mm -hmm. And essentially here's the breakdown is like they had become entitled and they had taken their eyes off of the main thing. They weren't paying attention in the car. Mm. They had become possessive and entitled to their influence. Mm. They got into a wreck. And what happened is God allowed this woman to keep her platform, but revoked her influence. So she can no longer speak. She can no longer get the attention of other people. Oh, wow. So she saved the platform, but she lost her influence. Wow. This is what's happening inside of like, when you look at church, institutionalized church, mm -hmm. you have people that are called into it. They are anointed for it. And then they become possessive and they think that they are responsible for people getting saved and people seeing Jesus. And they become flippant with their anointing. It becomes more about a run sheet than it becomes about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And they lose it because the moment that you believe that what happens in your life is because of you, what happens in other people is because of you, mm. you become, you, you become prideful. Yep. So you can, and this is what's, this is what's dangerous is the line between anointing and gifting is very blurry. You practice this. You have to practice being in your anointing. You can be sloppy with it and not know how to do anything with it. And like, you're kind of mm -hmm. just like drunk on it, or you can practice it and so you're excellent with it and you're excellent with your anointing. This is why knowledge is important. Mm -hmm. This is why skill is important because if God's going to anoint you with something, you might as well be amazing at it. Yeah. Like you might as well take it seriously and like be, be great, you know, but when you lose that anointing, you can fake it. And people who are not spiritually tuned in will not be able to tell the difference between uh -huh. anointing and skill. Yep. And, and every, churches yeah. can run a long time on faking the anointing. Oh yeah. And it's just really talented musicians mm -hmm. and really talented preachers uh -huh. who are basically self-help motivational speakers. Yep. And people are like, Oh my God, that church is so anointed. It's like, look around. I don't see Holy spirit anywhere. I don't feel the wind anywhere. Yep. 
if you ever ever leave a session where you are anointed and you don't feel a little bit relieved it wasn't anointing <laughs> every time you come off stage every time you leave an important conversation there should be a reverence for like <sighs> yep like i just touched the face of god and he didn't kill me yeah yeah, yeah. oof mm -hmm. if you man i'm telling you if you ever leave any assignment without feeling a little bit relieved that God's anointing showed up, you've become possessive and prideful. And there will come a day when you step into that river and that river is not your friend anymore. Wow. So it's a very important thing to know how to get into this river. Why do I say anointing is a river? Because bro, you really never have the same anointing the same way at the same season ever, more than once ever. Mm. It's always different. It's always different. The, the angels in heaven, they bow down, they look up and they see God mm -hmm. and they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. You're so incredible. And they bow down because they can't take it anymore and they come up and they see a different facet of God. Mm. It is always changing. Yes. yes. They, anoint, you, they, they say that you can't step into the same river twice because the river is different and so are you. Yep. Because the river's changing. Yep. You're changing. There's mm -hmm. no such thing as that. You don't step into the same anointing twice ever. Which is why you can't just, I preached a sermon last year and I'm going to preach the same sermon this year. No, it doesn't work that way. You can say the same points, but the anointing will be different. Mm -hmm. And so there, when something's brand new, there should always be this element of like, here we go. <laughs> You're like, I don't know what's going to happen. Like in October, yeah. a couple of weeks, I'm teaching on belief architecture mm -hmm. well dude i've already taught snippets of this but it's going to be so different because the people are different the river is going to be different mm -hmm. and what i don't want is i don't want to ever be caught in a position where i'm relying on my talent and i have kind of reduced my need for the anointing been there been there many times is everybody anointed everyone has access to it everyone has access to it mm-hmm I know, I know you're trying to go somewhere with this, so I want to honor that. And I want to make sure we're taking people with us as we go. Because um, I know for me, I have no idea how I got my anointing. If I had to put it back to something, I would have put it God back. God gave it to you. Yes. Yes. But God can give you a tool and you not know how to use it. Yes. And I, have, and I don't even know when I started access, accessing it. I have no idea. How would you... My, so my question becomes... Do you have a codification at all for how to access your anointing, how to find it? Like, is it also a thing for unbelievers or is it just for believers? I kind of think, now this is going to be in trouble, but I think that I have seen unbelievers operate in anointing. Really? I just don't think that, but yeah, because like when you look at like, People who don't believe, they believe in the universe or something, whatever. Sure. Like their God is is their universe. Mm -hmm. God will use literally anything. Like God will use whatever he wants. So God will use rocks, for the freaking a rock. Like he'll just, the rocks will sing. The rocks will, I'll make the rocks come alive and they'll use their mouth and they'll sing. Mm -hmm. God will use things that the church would never expect to be used to point people back to God. And so I felt it. I can't argue with that. Mm -hmm. um, and sort of my my system is like, I told Mike I'm playing this game with Holy Spirit. It's a new game that I just discovered, which is like when I am curious about something, I'll just be like, is this true or false? And I'll, I'll look for peace. And I'll ask him things and I'll have a piece about it. I'll be like, I think that that's true, but I don't know why. And so when I've played this game with like, I'm literally listening to like a Coldplay record. I'm like, I is this is play. this anointed? Oh man, this is anointed. How did he get that? Because he's not accessing it and he's not like set apart for it. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand it completely. I don't know that anybody does. Like, if you really understand it, is it anointing? <laughs> like, I don't know. But yeah, I think unbelievers can access it. Mm. I don't think that they can access it predictably. Gotcha. I don't think they can call on it. I don't mm -hmm. think they can rely on it. 
I think it's just certain people come together, certain certain facets are connected, and God's like, we're going to use this because this person needs this. Mm-hmm. So, boom. Well, Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. In the old days, what you would do is you would you would anoint someone to set them apart. So this is a this is a Cochini talks about the mirror, the reversal. This is an old reversal. So how do you get anointed? In the old days, pre Jesus, you would anoint them. So Aaron was anointed. David was anointed. Uh, Jehu was anointed. So was Saul, wasn't he? Saul was anointed. So a prophet would basically go and he would anoint the person. Mm-hmm. And that anointing was what set someone apart. It doesn't work that way today. Mm. That's why, like, this whole, like, I'm going to pray that you have a double portion of my thing is not real. Mm-hmm. It doesn't survive the filter of Jesus. Because there is no transference via anointing being dropped on someone's head and then they get the spirit of God. That's not how it works anymore. Yeah. How it works now is it's reversed. So Saul was anointed to set him apart. Now you're set apart to receive the anointing. Mm. So one of the first like practical behavioral applicable steps is if you want to get really good at stepping in and out of this river, then you have to set yourself apart. You have to, so I was praying for you on the way to Miami. Mm-hmm. And um, it was one of those things where like, I could tell that God wanted to say something to me, but I didn't understand what he was saying. So I was writing things down. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm going to have to figure this out later because this makes no sense to me. And the, it's almost, when you ever, have you ever had these moments where you ask God questions and he answers a different question? Yeah. So that's sort of what was happening. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, that's for something later. And then I felt like Holy Spirit was like, no, that's the answer to this question. Oh, You're just not making the connection. And so I was praying for you and I was sort of like trying to figure out, like codify it. How do I get in? Because like a couple of weeks ago, I played at conference. I'm behind a keyboard for 15 hours. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I just know how to step into it. Mm-hmm. And I actually, what's hilarious, dude, is I don't know what I'm doing. Like, But you do. I know how to play. I don't know how it works. I just know that when I step into the river, the river carries everyone. Huh. That's all I know. That's my code of, that's been my codification to this point. Yeah. I just know that when I like when you put me on stage and you give me a microphone and you turn it on. Yep. I step into the river and if the river carries the room with me. Mm. But I don't exactly know like how that's being powered. Mhm. I don't understand it. Mhm. But what Holy Spirit told me is he said Power is one of the many derivatives of purity. And I got a sense that there were like eight or nine things that purity pushes you into. And I don't know what they are yet. I'm going to study them and Mm -hmm. figure it out and we'll bring it back to you. So I was like, well, that's cool. Let me write that down for another day. He's like, no, this is anointing. How do you set yourself apart? Purity. Makes so much sense. You begin to remove yourself from the behaviors that are allowed for other people, but they're not allowed for the anointed. And anytime mixture comes in, and there's a whole theology of mixture that we don't have time to talk about. Yeah. Because we're called to like kind of mix with the world, but not in the, not in the aspect of purity. Yes. Anytime mixture comes in, God gets real mad. Yeah. And he kind of just like pulls stuff away. Wow. And so this 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 it goes back to the dream. Like these people had become entitled to something. They had taken their eyes off the prize, and they had allowed mixture to come in in their personal lives. Mm-hmm. And God's like, you can't speak for the rest of your life. You can live. You can keep your platform, but you have no more influence. And this is the most. This is where it gets into like. So let's get practical for a second. Mm-hmm. The moment you feel a check about something, you can no longer do it. Yep. Even when you can't explain why. Yep. Now, that does not mean that you need to go online and be like, this is wrong. <laughs> it's not wrong for everyone. We're not talking about sin, by the way. Purity, I'm not talking about sin. I'm not. Yep. Like, obviously, like, yeah, if you want to be, like, really a clean vessel, you should probably try to figure out how to abstain from some things that are <laughs> overtly sinful. Yep. That's not what I'm talking about, though. Yeah. What I'm talking about is, like, this person called me and I felt a check. Yep. Not allowed to talk to them anymore. That's crazy. Hmm. Purity is what drives power. 
Hmm. I was listening to this song on the way to an event and I felt the check. Remove. Mm-hmm. Set apart. Yep. So we're not talking about the realm of things of like, dude, don't go sleep around with your with everyone you see on the street. Yep. We're talking about there's music you can't listen to. Mm-hmm. There's people you can't talk to. There's movies you can't watch. And this is going to come down to your personal relationship with Holy Spirit. Huh. He's literally going to tell you what what you're able to do and mm-hmm. not do. Does that make sense? It makes so much sense. So yeah. then, so I got this on the plane and I'm sort of like, well, that's real hard to codify, but I think I understand it. And one of the phrases that God has been speaking to me over and over and over and over and over again is you can prepare, but only I can turn the power on. You can prepare, but I turn the lights on. You can prepare, but I'm the one that powers it. It's like YouTube would be an example of this. Instagram, our social media, the growth of the businesses. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, this is like mm-hmm. a, an insane reversal for a business owner like me who is used to training people on tactically how do you grow your business. Mm-hmm. And God's like, cool, but hold on one sec. Push pause on everything. Watch this. Turns the power on. Yep. And I didn't even do anything. Mm-hmm. And it's like, this is growing way faster than my own skill set yeah. is growing it. And so this is the second, the second piece in, of, of practicality is when you get into these moments, when you are feeling in flow, like you last week, mm-hmm. one of the first steps that always has to occur after you step out of anointing is thanking God for allowing you to access the anointing. It's like you're watching my life through a past lens. It's so weird right now. So good though. Because here's the thing. We don't... The things that we feel like we own, we do not say thank you for. Yeah. So you don't own this anointing. Yep. You don't control it. No. You step into it. And so from a heart standpoint, like after every event, after every worship set. It may be right after, it may be an hour later, but I'm pretty consistent in just being like, God, thank you for allowing me to access that. Because the next time that this opportunity comes up, I want to be able to access it again. And if I get confused about where this is coming from, Mm -hmm. I'm in a deep, dark place. Because you never know when you're going to show up and that anointing, you were counting on it. It didn't show up. Yep. And I don't want to experience that. Yep. Make sense? This this is uh this makes too much sense. Is this practical enough for you? <laughs> it's really so good. It begs the question of like how do you um so I think there are levels to this. I think there are levels to operating in anointing. Mm-hmm. And certain people like are really, really anointed to do the most weird stuff. Um because it's tied to giftings. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we've talked about this. Like, some of the music stuff that you put on shorts, I'm like, bro, oh my gosh, you are anointed. <laughs> and my wife was um, praying for your house when, before you got married, and oh, she yeah. got into a certain room, she just fell down and started crying. Mm-hmm. That's anointing. Because mm-hmm. anointing moves you and you don't understand it. Mm-hmm. If you can understand it and put it together scientifically, it's probably not anointing. And it was your room, it was your editing room. Mm-hmm. So, you're anointed for this. Yep. Like, you're anointed for media. And you're anointed for moments Mm -hmm. and movement when people watch media. Mm -hmm. But there are levels to it. Level one is like you have it, but you don't know how you have it. And your your access is randomized. It's super random. This is like the baseline. It's like when you first realize that you have access to something, like, whoa, what was that? Right. That's crazy. And then it takes you a year and a half to get back into it. Mm -hmm. It's super random. It happens almost ad hoc. You don't know how to use the tool. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to use the gift. Like you're just kind of like, it's there. You know, it's there, but you're like, I don't know what to do with it. Right. That's like where you started. It's where I started. Mm -hmm. It's where all of us start because we don't know how to get into it. Yep. Level two is you can get into it frequently. So it's somewhat consistent, but here's the level two problem is the, the setting has to be just right. As in the setting of being the environment. The environment, the 
the way you feel like everything's got to be just just so so mm -hmm. because if, if it's not so so if it's not just like the last time your intellect will block you from stepping into the river well so what we where this the second level is when it's consistent but we're sort of trying to just pattern recognize our way into it well okay so this is like here's an example um we i i actually have done this before on accident like we have this venue that we go to sometimes when it's a smaller event mm -hmm. and every event we've had at this venue has been so like transformational mm -hmm. for people and so um for october for the october event this is hilarious because i'm literally i'm just now remembering this for the first time like oh i got trapped in level two for something um i'm like let's go back to this venue mm-hmm because I, I need October to be like conducive for for flow, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we set the venue. We sold it out in two days because it's too small. <laughs> and then I really wrestled with moving the venue because I was like, I need this to be a good. You need to feel right. I need it to feel right. Well, this is level two. Mm -hmm. This is like, if the lights aren't perfect, if the... If there's a blip, like if we're recording this and like something happens and I can't get back into flow, like that's level two. Like it's just not, it's not perfect. And so I can't use it. I can't yeah. use the skill. Yeah. Level three is where you can call it and cue it on command. Mm. You can step into it anytime you want to. So when Paul in Revelation, when he's like, I was in the spirit and I started and I heard this voice and I turned around and looked at him or uh, not Paul, John. I said John. John in Revelation, he's like, I was in the spirit. <laughs> you get the sense that like, these people were like, they would be sitting at a movie theater and they would just like go into the spirit. Yeah. Like on call, like I'm going to step into the river real fast. Yeah. Okay. Here's what I need to step out of the spirit. You can step in and out and in and out and in and out. Yep. Things don't have to be perfectly conducive for it. The, yep. the setting doesn't have to be any, any which way you have a, you know what it feels like, you know how to get there and you can step right into it. Mm-hmm. What's funny is like I'll still bounce around between level two and level three, because when I'm when I'm really prayed up, it's a natural like I need to go into the spirit. Yep. I need to get into the river. Mm -hmm. And when I'm not really prayed up, I'm like, <laughs> we need the venue to be right. We need everything to be perfect. <laughs> yep. Last night, bro, we're on a date night with me and Lindsay. We moved our date night to last night. And what's funny is yesterday morning, I was. Monday night, I was going to wake up really early because I was like, I just need to pray about some things. I just need to spend some time with God. Huh. So I woke up really early Monday or Tuesday and my routines kicked in. I just went straight to the gym, skipped it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize it until yesterday afternoon. And when I realized it, I was like kind of bothered that I didn't even realize that I skipped it. Mm. Like my day just kicked in and I just skipped it. And so last night at, at dinner, uh, we're talking about things. And I was like, I just don't know. I don't have clarity on, we're talking about a certain certain issue. It's like, I don't have clarity. I don't feel like I know where God is. Mm. And it's because I'm skipping, <laughs> like I'm skipping the mornings. Yeah. I'm supposed to pray in the mornings and I'm not because I'm busy. And this is my first week back home in seven weeks. And so I'm just like, I'm trying to catch up on everything. Mm. And uh, my intellect is running the show. Yep. And she's like, my wife is perfect. So she's like, well, let's wrap up date night and let's go back home and you go do your thing and go talk to God. So I go and I sit in this chair in this corner and I said, hey, I repent for operating off of my intellect, which is self-worship, which is a refusal to access the river of anointing. And I'm choosing my own skill set instead of your anointing. And God's like, it's okay. And then 15 pages of notes over 30 minutes. Because I unlocked the dam oh, that was being man. held up. So now I'm like, I know exactly what to do in this. I know exactly what to do with this event. I know what to teach about. Yep. Like, I know what to talk about tomorrow. Like, there's, if I can just get people to grasp this, like, I am a brilliant writer. Mm -hmm. I can write things that will move you to any emotion that I choose. Yep. I can play music that will make you feel whatever I want you to play. Dude, like this is not me discounting the need for talent. Yes. But if I had to pick between my talent 
and the river dude if i'm going after the river yep every single time because life never makes sense without the river mm -hmm. ever it will never make sense without the river and so you learn how to step into this whenever you need to it's so like last night and i was texting Lindsay like two or three things she's like did you just get this in the last 15 minutes i was like i got this in the last 45 seconds because I feel like I'm supposed to talk about it in a couple of weeks. And then nothing else in the world touches that. There's mm -hmm. no nootropic that touches that. There's no psychedelic you can access that, what, that will give you this. It is the coolest thing in the world. And it is why anointing is so resisted from a spiritual level. Mm. Anytime you're about to step into anointed, uh, like an anointed moment, mm -hmm. your mind will find everything in your world that needs to be fixed right then. Yep. You'll, you'll remember everything that you have been forgetting. You'll, all, all the procrastination, you'll now be like, I can't procrastinate, I need to do this now. It's crazy how much resistance there is uh, against anointing. And part of the reason why is because when, when you step into your anointing and you're operating in your anointing, it doesn't matter if it's media, education, music, speaking, parenting, whatever, you get into this river, hell will get out of the way. It's suicidal to stand in front of a dam that's opening. So you get into this river and the spirit, what's happening is you're going up, you're opening a dam and whew, the power of God comes out. Correct. Yeah. So we talk about spiritual warfare really practically, but if you have the ability to get into the throne room mm -hmm. and to sit there, the, it's suicidal for, for demonic activity to sit in the middle of that hmm. because they're never coming back after that. Because the Holy Spirit's flowing through someone and you had, you've had, if, if you've had sessions, like I've had sessions where I'm like writing and I'm like in the anointing hmm. and I've invited God and I've asked him to, to write what he wants to write. Mm -hmm. And it's like all of a sudden everything else just takes back seat and it's like an open conduit. Hmm. Jeez. <clears throat> I I think the first thing that came to my mind was the anointing is beautiful and it's something that everything I, every one of us wants. And you talked you talked a little bit on this, but what does it look like more and more to go set apart? Cuz I think that's the most powerful piece is like if you can get that piece locked in, the byproduct will be anointing as a result. So, what what are some more things that that has looked like for you in terms of locking into the purity side of, of things to get the anointing? There are certain seasons where I will stop reading um, certain books. So like I won't, it, anything that distracts me from what I feel like God has wanted me to do in that season. I have a playlist. It sounds kind of silly, but me and one of my, one of our clients who's become a friend, his name is Iggy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we put together this playlist, which is just instrumental music that feels really good. It's like cinematic music. Yep. But I'll go through seasons where I don't listen to anything with words in it. Hmm. No music with words. Not even worship songs. I really? won't listen to any of it. Really? No words. And I'll sort of know that I'm supposed to do this based on how I feel when I'm listening to something I don't need to be listening to mm. right now. But dude, I'm not talking about songs about sex and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about like it's deeper than that bro I'll put on a a worship playlist with Bethel on it and mm -hmm. it'll be like something feels wrong this is mixing me up yep there's words that are programming me that I'm not I'm not supposed to be programmed right now mm -hmm. it's not that it's bad it's just I'm gonna go on a word fast yep like I'm not gonna listen to any podcasts I'm not gonna listen to any music with words in it um, there are times when certain friends that I love and that I'm still friends with. Mm -hmm. I just need a season of not as much yep. involvement. Yep. There are seasons, and this this will ruffle all the religious feathers in everyone's freaking circle, but there are seasons when I just feel like I'm not actually supposed to um, engage or serve as much at church So I won't. Yeah. And I'll take three or four weeks to figure out what I'm supposed to do. Like, why is that happening? Yeah. It's not mixture in the sense of sin. It's mixture in the sense of like, this is what God is trying to, 
I'm a conduit. God's trying to pump something through me Mm -hmm. to get it into a book or into an event or into a podcast. And if I become unclear on what that thing is, Mm -hmm. if it's impacted by this preacher, if it's impacted by this music, if it's impacted by this, and I will abstain from it for just a little bit until I can get clearer. Yeah. Does that make sense? It makes a ton of sense because you see that with with Jesus all the time. He was always- Went off by himself. Oh yeah, all the time. No, he didn't go to the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. He went off by himself Yeah, on a hill somewhere and stared at trees and prayed. (laughs) Which as an introvert, I'm like, bro, Jesus was the goat. Yeah. So much power came from that. Yeah. It makes, it makes so much sense because I've had, I've had a lot of those experiences for my life. I think another thing that's happened for me from the anointing is when it, I felt it kick in, I actually can't be around anybody for almost three hours. Sometimes I'm done for the entire day. Because what I remember this happened, and do you want me to share a story on this? Yeah. December, we did a, uh, oh, dang it, I have to keep this really general. Let's just say, December, <clears throat> I have to be careful because there's people involved that they'll, they'll know who I'm talking about. But You don't have to share it if you don't want to. I will. I, it's, it's powerful because it was the first time I really, really, really caught it, and uh, I've, I've remembered it ever since. There was a moment, um, I was in a place, worship broke out super heavy like wildly heavy people were wailing on the floor i was trying to show somebody a song of mine that i've been working on they started playing piano to it and the next thing i know three or four people are wailing prophesying like I'm, my whole body's like wailing what do you mean i mean like crying like wailing crying. like ear piercing shrieking almost yes like, i would just leave dude no 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 no, no. it was like holy it was it was holy it felt so holy and i remember sitting in that moment and i just felt so much power in the room and i was like I am, are we about to go to heaven right now? I don't, I don't know what's about to happen. And I remember that moment ended and uh, there were some people that decided not to be in the room and I could feel there was like this very dead apathetic spirit. I couldn't be around anybody for the rest of the day. I was so, my spirit was so uh, tainted with, if there is not this level of purity, this separation, I can't be around it. Are you open to a word reframe? Yes. Instead of saying I can't be around you could substitute that with saying I should not. Yes. I was not supposed to. I fully agree. Yeah. Fully agree. It's typically like that, that just is, um, you don't want to like the, the, the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet. So can't is a really hard one. You're so right. You're so right. Yeah. But that's something that I've learned is that when you get into that powerful moment, you're like, Oh, if I could sit in this for the rest of my life, who knows what would happen? Yeah, and then we and then we forget it. Like I forgot it, and then I just kind of like forgot about that moment. So thanks for jogging that. I got you. That's good. I got you. Um, Okay. Um, A person is most anointed when there is less of their identity and more of God's identity. So I have a theory on some some of this stuff when um, when when you see unbelievers who are who seem to be accessing the anointed. I almost have a theory that they're like really exhausted or really tired <laughs> or like not fully shown up. Oh, wow. Because there's like a, almost a spiritual rule here mm-hmm. where like anointing kind of tends to come in and occupy a space. You get in that river, like you're no longer Jake, you're the river. Like you're kind of in that. Are you, you're saying zone. the identity of God or what God says about us? The identity of, of God. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Not the person of God, but God's identity. God oh, okay. showing up in you. This is why when you yes. said, what's Holy Spirit power? What is anointing power by Holy Spirit? Yeah. It's power by Holy Spirit. When God wants to speak, he usually uses Jesus now. Like Jesus is the word. Mm-hmm. When God wants to move, he usually uses the wind, which is Holy Spirit. Yeah. So when 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 your identity is lower, less, less like one of my good friends, you were driving me back from the event last week. Yeah. Because I was like, I don't know how to drive. I've got to speak and I I've got to go to Miami. To drive. Do you remember that? You were busy. I was like, I <laughs> can't drive. You have to drive me. Um <laughs> But on the way back, I have a weekly call with one of my buddies uh-huh. and he's like spirit led, runs a business and runs a ministry. And so we talk every week and we're like, what's God doing in your life? Which is phenomenal, by the way. Mm-hmm. Like if you want to get, if you want to nail some of this, find someone who like just kind of is on the same wavelength as you mm-hmm. and uh, just put it in the calendar and start talking to weekly. So we, we literally like, I'll, I'll confess things to him that I'm like, I, dude, I had an area of weakness this week where I mm-hmm. like totally didn't pray for seven days or something crazy or 
You get sensitivity to purity when you have to confess your lack of purity to another person. Yeah, that's, that's very true. And it's not, bro, it's not what you think. It's not like, he's never called me and been like, bro, I cheated on my wife this week. And I know <laughs> that's, that's just table stakes, man. That's like base level. Uh, and he wouldn't be able to get there without talking to you for don't, three months. Yeah, don't like, okay. When I say confess, I don't mean like, hey, man, I looked at porn. No, that's just don't look at that. But what I'm talking about is the sensitivity to like, in my heart, someone someone said I did amazing this week. And I said, you're right. I did do amazing. Mm. And I'm confessing that because that shoplifted glory from heaven. And I internalized it. Yep. So your sensitivity for like how to be set apart, bro, you'll get wildly sensitive to it. If you know you got to show up once a week and tell someone else where you messed up. So yep. why the Bible is like, confess your sins to one another. It's not just saying confess your adultery. No, confess your sin. Mm -hmm. And sin is basically everything. Yep. You know? This level of purity drives you to humility. Yes. And if it doesn't, then you are surrounded by the wrong people. So we were talking, bro, and he was like, how's your identity? How, how are you? Because he's like, you you know, you're going to your, your eighth event tonight, and you just got off stage, and <laughs> he knows my personality, and I'm like a lone time guy, and I haven't had any alone time. And I said... Actually, it's really great. There's not a lot of me left right now. <laughs> so God's showing up. And he was like, that's profound. Hmm. This is anointing. Like, if you want it to be amazing, if, you, if you're going on stage and you're speaking and you believe in God, just try praying this. Hey, I pray that you would, there would be more of you and less of me up mm -hmm. there. I pray that I would just be invisible. And then watch what happens. But hey, don't take freaking credit for that once it's done. <laughs> Because then you just freaking cheated. <laughs> You're cheating. <laughs> so like when we go on, when, when I go in, like I did it in Miami again, I was like, hey, Holy Spirit, say exactly what you want to say. I pray that um, I would just decrease and get really small and you increase and get really big. Every time. That's part of how I prepare to step into the river. Because mm -hmm. by the time I'm stepping into the river, it's just the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. um, last thing, and then we'll get into like specific prayers and, and uh, blockers, and then we got to wrap up. Cool. You feel good so far? Great. Really good. Keep in mind that there is a major assignment against you learning how to step into your anointing. Major assignment. So there's great, there's a lot of spiritual warfare around this because you're, the powers that be like don't want a Christian stepping into power mm -hmm. that's like worst case scenario for them so they either they either have to block your ability to step into it or they have to corrupt your there's only two two strategies here they either block you from it or they corrupt you once you're once you come out of it yikes the way they corrupt you once you come out of it is if they can convince you through pride that it was you who did that it was yours then you'll never be able to step into it again it's like soul it's like soul yeah, hundred percent obedience, and then go in the wrong direction with it. If they can block you from even accessing it, which usually I'm going to give you like specific blocks at the end of this that will prevent you from being able to even get into it in the first place, then they win. They win as well. Mm. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. so, but watch from the spiritual front because there's always a there's always a systemic approach to blocking someone from anointing. It's always a two pronged approach. If you have two militaries, two opposing armies, and they're just trying to kill each other. Well, a good general, a good strategist is not going to be like, hey, there's a bird flying in that window. You see He's that? freaking out. It just keeps flying into the glass. He'll, yeah, he'll figure it out. He wants the anointing, baby. <laughs> but you're a bird. <laughs> know your place. <laughs> so you've got this general, this strategist, who's like, I've got this army. I want them to, to kill the other army. No good general is going to be like, just run at them with everyone we have as fast as you can. <laughs> That's not a strategy. Before you kill you have to position so the first prong is always a, a, an attack of positioning mm -hmm. it's not an attack to get you to cheat on your spouse it's not an attack to get you to lie it's not an attack to get you to uh, steal that's not the first attack by the time you're tempted to do those things you are already positioned incorrectly mm. the first offensive approach and maneuver is positioning we have to get that army distracted, split, 
looking somewhere else, confused. We have to we have to take the army and make them think that the attack's coming from that way, and then we run on them. Mm. So the first attack of the enemy will always be an attack of positioning. Always. Mm. Like a physical positioning? Nope. What do you mean by that? Spiritual positioning. Okay. It will be an attack to get you to believe that you are not good enough. Mm. And then what's the second attack? A kill shot. The kill shot would be pride. Mm. But for you to accept pride, you first have to accept insecurity. Oh, wow. That is very true. The kill shot. Cheat on your spouse with another woman. But that does not work if you are not bitter. So the positioning is to get yourself, get you bitter. So you believe that your needs aren't being met and they, they did this and they did that and you build up this and you're already in this spot. Dude, the enemy's not going to tempt you with something that will not work. Mm-hmm. He's going to position you first. Mm-hmm. So watch for insecurity. Watch for bitterness. Watch for self-reliance. For you to take a deal that is immoral doesn't work mm-hmm. unless you feel like you are the only way for you to get to your targets, which wow. is self-reliance. Yes. You have to be positioned first to take the bait. Mm-hmm. Makes sense? Yep. Um, <clears throat> this is back to purity. Like if, if you're only sensitive to the sin of adultery, <laughs> you're missing it. Mm. You must be sensitive to the sin of bitterness. If you're only sensitive to the sin of pride, you missed it. You must be sensitive to the sin of insecurity. Insecurity yes. is a sin because mm-hmm. you don't believe what God said about you. Mm-hmm. And so we, we, we got to watch for these things because what will block your ability to step in the river. I'm just give you four things and we're going to, we'll pray through them. Mm-hmm. Self-promotion, self-promotion and pride. Mm-hmm. The belief in you that if this is going to be good, I have to make it good. Well, like is in the the thought of I could do it better. Nope. No. I have to make it good. I am responsible for this. Uh, Yes. Now in business, they teach you. This is why we have to redo the episode on new age. Because a lot of the new age teaching is uh, if you have an iceberg. Yeah. And you see the top 30% of that iceberg, but you don't see the bottom 70%. Mm -hmm. New age is just like the top 30%. Yeah. And so, like, sort of works. Mm-hmm. But the bottom 70% is what's required to keep it from killing you in the process. Yes. So a lot of people who sell out to new age, they're just slowly dying. Yeah. They're getting what they want short term, and they're trading things away that are infinity. Yep. So self-promotion, this feeling of business will teach you, like, you're responsible. We're all responsible. The buck stops here. That's not not true. Mm-hmm. It's just the top 30%. Mm. What, what you see about responsibility at the top, if it's not substantiated by a healthy dose of submission underneath it, then it will corrupt you. Mm. That responsibility will corrupt you. Yes. This self-promotion, this self-reliance will block you from stepping into the river. Bitterness and criticism. Anytime you see somebody else succeeding, blowing up, being successful, and you feel a sharp twinge of like, why are they getting that and I'm not? Mm-hmm. It's sin of bitterness. And it's likely because you've got a kill shot coming and you need to be positioned so you you take a bite of that poison. Mm. So whenever I see like I've got great I've got friends who like have just magically blown up mm-hmm. and in my heart I've had to be real careful that I'm not like, I did all the same things they did. Why am I not experiencing that? Yeah. Well, that's a positioning affront. That's an offense to get me positioned because if I can accept bitterness, then later I will begin to be critical of myself, which leads into pride. Mm -hmm. Fear of man is a big one. It's a block you completely. Do you, do you care what other people think about you? I love to say no, but um, in my heart, I would say that that would be a lie. Same. Yeah. It's like even these blocks, just because I'm talking about it doesn't mean I'm like (laughs) master of the universe. Yeah. Like I'm literally just like reading my own diaries here. What did we say? We're like, we're like externally processing basically on this show. Yeah. So man, fear of man, any, any time I feel like someone can take something away from me, if I don't 
that's that actually is like a derivative of of the Jezebel principality, yep. which is the fear of man, and the fear of man will completely destroy you. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing something like in in music, there's this like massive fear of man, where everything is about agendas, self promotion, yeah, and what God typically blesses are the people who are more worried about what God thinks about them than what other people think about them. Hmm. So you, you got to watch for this anytime and fear of man is not just being afraid of other people. Fear of man is anytime you do something because of the response you'll get from another person. That's fear of that needs to be recognized as the fear of man. Mm -hmm. That'll block you. Correct. And then religion is the fourth one. And what I mean by religion, I'm going to decode this is is anything that is works based promotion mm. works based achievement anything that you've connected back into like i do this i get this mm. i do this i get this not all of this is bad once again the top 30 percent. like you need to have a healthy level of responsibility you need to do the right things to get the right things you need to think the right things to get the right feelings you need to take care of other people because it's the right thing to do there are moments where it's like i need this person to be fully bought in. So I'm going to give them a raise. I'm going to promote them a little bit. I'm going to lock them in with equity. All of these things are, are fine, but it's the top 30% underneath that. If it's not supported by a healthy, sizable belief that God can do whatever he wants. And if he chooses to use me, great. And if he doesn't, I'm dead in the water. Mm. If it's not supported by that, it will corrupt you. So we're not talking about how to get good at business in this episode. We're talking about how to step into the river of anointing. Mm. The way you step into the river of anointing is almost the opposite of how you get good at business. Because hmm. it has nothing to do with you. Right. It has nothing to do with your power. And it has everything to do with your realization that if God doesn't show up, then no, my skill is not going to do anything. Well, it's, it's, the, it's the mirror of business. It's the opposite of it. And so the, this does, this teaching doesn't exist because no one is run, no one's running both sides of it, mm -hmm. at least that I've seen. Now that may be an arrogant statement, but I've never seen someone operate. This is why I've had such a hard time reconciling these two worlds. Because in business, I'm almost this person, and in the spirit, I'm almost this person. And learning how to run these two at the same time is super difficult, mm -hmm. and it takes a lot of practice. But you, but you would say, um, I've heard a lot of people even say like you have like an anointing for business. Mm -hmm. So you've had to, but the, but simultaneously you have quite a bit of intellect. And so you could do it, you could do it without the anointing and it's worked before. So you've been able to, you've had to almost like blend the two. What is, yeah, been, but it's what has always, been differential? it's always come with the collateral waste or the toxicity yes. of doing it my way. Yeah. So it's worked, but has it? How many employees have, have I lost? Hundreds. I mean, I've lost more employees than most people will ever hire. Uh -huh. How much, like, how much insecurity have I battled with? How much anxiety have I dealt with? Mm -hmm. And now you get into this where it's like, look, yeah, I'm still going to, like, we had an all-day team offsite yesterday. It was amazing. And we're, like, just, you know, prepping for the next year, 12 months. And it's a lot of stuff in the natural, but it's driven by the spirit. It's mm -hmm. driven by like, dude, go into your closet, pray about this, figure out what God says. When you know what God says, then God will partner with you to make it happen in the natural. Mm -hmm. But if you go into the natural and you don't know what God said and you don't know what to, how to use the spirit, then you're, you're going to have to work three times as hard. It's going to take 10 times as long. And you're going to have a lot of dead bodies behind you from the collateral damage of your own toxicity. Yeah, for sure. So it's definitely a both and. Yeah. It's All right, really we got to wrap up. Cool. Um, here's what I would pray before uh, wanting to step into this. Cool. And I'll actually just pray it because we're about to do another episode with someone and I want it to be anointed yep. as well. Ready? Yeah. Then we'll, then we'll roll. You feel good. good so far? Great. Okay. Was this helpful? Super For helpful. you personally? Yeah, it was amazing. It was okay. amazing. Thank you. All right. God, we love you. And we are so thankful for what you have done for us and what you have made possible for us. Thank you that we don't have to perform anymore. Thank you that we don't have to go through rituals and sacrifices because Jesus took care of all of that. I pray that uh, for this next episode, you would anoint us. And we pray that actually there would be less of us and way more of you. We're not in this for us. We're not in this for what we could get from it. We're in this so that what you, what you want to happen will happen. And I pray that we would become invisible. 
uh, as the Bible says, nameless and faceless, that we our identities would be completely tied and anchored to you. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't need to know what's going to happen. And we pray that you would use us the way you want to use us. And rather than us using you, we repent for any time in the past that has happened. We pray that you would have an open book, an open access to use our mouths and to use our hands and to use our, our giftings the way that you want them used. Paint a picture of how awesome you are. We don't ask for you to honor us. We ask for you to honor yourself through us. Pray that you would point back to you, point the, point the glory back to you. And we, uh, we're so in love with you that whatever you want to have happen, we're on board for that happening. Thank you for the gift. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Then you're good. Love it. And you just hang on to that. Because that state is literally like, who cares? 10 out of 10. It's not, it's not me anyways. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yep, I do. It's really good. Cool. Love you guys.